Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, we're going to talk about collisions in Unity and how you can test whether a certain point on your collider is colliding with another object and also whether a certain point is inside of a trigger. So I'm going to make sure to link to, it's kind of a long video, so I'll make sure to link to certain points in the video if you want to skip ahead a little bit. Recently I was doing a project, not this project that I have up, but I needed some more specific collision detection. Uh, specifically, I needed to know if a certain point on the object was hitting a certain thing. And I had never had to deal with this before, um, so I had to come up with my own solution for it. Um, turns out Unity actually has pretty good support for it, it's just not super well known. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of it in um, tutorials or anything like that. So this is a scene that I created just for the pure purpose of demonstrating it to you. I pulled out my old uh, ghost asset from a VR project I was developing several years ago. And uh, basically I can control him with the WAS and D keys, uh, rotate him around. So what, you'll, what you're seeing on the ground is actually a bunch of spheres being uh, created and then eventually uh, going away uh, that are being sort of attached or just placed as the uh, as this guy moves around. So I want to show these. This right here is a solid block. Um, it's just got a standard collider on it. And when I hit it, I have it set up so that when the right hand of the ghost hits the wall, then a series of blue spheres show up. And then when the left hand hits the wall, then it's green. And in fact, it can hit both at the same time and then both show up now there's another one that is inside of this trigger so this is a trigger object and i've made it so that the little sphere trails show up inside of the uh, box okay so that's basically what's happening in this project i've made it so that it does interesting things at specific points when they hit the colliders so I'll, I'll stop this for now, and I'm going to show you uh, the, this little object just so that, you're, you know, so that you understand what's going on. So let me open the prefab for this ghost. And this ghost, so this is a, it's a 3D mesh that I made a while back, but the mesh isn't very important, actually. Uh, let me hide it for just a sec. Um, and you can see the colliders. So these are the colliders of the ghost. Um, basically just four, four sphere colliders placed at different positions and those show up, um, here. So I've got, you know, this big radius one is centered at zero, zero, zero. Then I've got a centered one here, uh, kind of off to the right and to the left and then one behind. So you can do this with any shape of object you want. This is actually pretty common from my understanding, to take a collision or a, um, a more complex mesh and break it down into simpler or uh, even um, primitive colliders like this. So my the, the goal for this was to make it so that we could detect when this specific collider, or at least a, a very near point to this, was being hit or was inside of a trigger. So I've placed... Uh, I'm going to bring back the mesh here. I've placed three different empty uh, transforms, game objects basically, one for where the face is, one for where the right hand is, and one for where the left hand is. Um, I actually might have not used the face one, but we definitely use the right and the left hand. So basically these are just uh, transforms, and we're going to test to see whether the collision is near to this transform. And then I have a script attached to it. Oh, I'll also point out there's a rigid body. If you don't have a rigid body attached to your object, then collisions like this will not work no matter what you do. So make sure you have that there. Um, in my case, for movement, I have the uh, constraints here so that the rotation is controlled completely by my code and the position of in the y-axis, so up and down, doesn't change. And then the uh, gravity is turned off for this one too. So let me hop into the script for this really quick. And I'll share this script. Uh, there will be a link in the description of the video 
that will take you to this script so you can see the script in its entirety on that web on the website um, version of this tutorial so uh, basically have a couple settings up front for the speed and the rotation speed of the ghost uh, that's all for movement um, and then I have a few different transforms that I'm using. So the ground is the floor, basically, in the scene. The face, right hand, and left hand are those uh, empty transforms. Um, so these three right here. The trail material, I just hooked up three different materials that would be applied to those spheres when I spawn them. And then the rigid body and the ground collider. So the rigid body is you know the is this rigid body that's hooked up um, and then the ground collider is the collider of this object the floor um, so in start this is none of this is particularly important right now but i just wanted to walk through the whole thing um, i just get that rigid body and i get the ground collider and then now the first interesting thing happens so um, i do a process movement thing uh, this is just asking for keyboard input and then applying forces to the rigid body or rotating the um, the character. So not really anything um, particular to this tutorial, just basic movement. Leave trail. This, uh, this is where I'm actually doing something here. Um, so what I wanted to do was create a basic function that would leave a trail of spheres behind, just for visualization purposes. So let me show you how this works. I create a primitive uh, sphere, then I set the local scale to whatever we feed in, then I set the, um, the position to a certain point in space that's fed in, and then we set the parent, we set the um, collider, so we get the collider on it, and then we enable, or we set the enabled flag to false so that um, we don't start colliding with this this sphere it's it's just for visualization purposes um so like that trail of pink spheres if you if you don't turn this enable collider enabled off then it's going to stack those spheres up and not be the behavior you want and then the renderer um you get that and you can set the material so that's all that i'm doing here and then i'm setting it to destroy itself after 10 seconds so that's that's what leave trail does just so you're familiar because i'm going to use it a bunch and then this is the collision logic, the first collision logic that I do. So I have a ground collider. So that is the collider of this shape right here. And then I'm going to say ground collider dot closest point on bounds. So as the little uh, tooltip says, the closest point on the bounding box of the attached collider. Um, so you feed in a position. So I'm feeding in the the transform dot position of the ghost and then i'm asking the collider of the ground hey what's the closest point on the bounds so what that'll look like is the pink trail that's left underneath so that's the closest point on the bounds now if you are further away from it it'll actually run it along the edge because that's the closest point on the bounds so that's that's basically what that part does I'm calling that on every update step. Now update is every time a frame is rendered and I want to distinguish that from the fixed update. Fixed update is every time a physics step is updated. So um, if you're curious, you can go to, let me see, when, no, edit project settings and I'll just drag this over here. Um, then you can go into time and whoops, you can go into time and then you can see what your fixed time step is. Um, your fixed time step means that every 0 0.02 seconds, the physics is going to do an update step. So that's what that is. So fixed update is called every 0 0.02 seconds and update is called every time the frame updates, which if you have very low frame rate, because you've got way too much going on in your scene, it means that will be called less frequently. Um, but if you have a really high frame rate, it'll be called a lot. All right, so back to this. Um, so coming down to the other collisions that are happening, we're using something called on collision stay. 
So if you've done collisions in Unity before at all, you've probably used either on collision enter, on collision stay, or on collision exit. And in fact, if you go to the Unity documentation for this, um, for colliders, you can see this on collision enter, exit, and stay. Um, it's called once per frame for every collider rigid body that is touching the rigid body collider. Um, it says once per frame, but this might be different on the collider logic than, let me see really quick, on collision enter. So typically, yeah, monobehavior.onCollisionEnter is probably called every physics update. Uh, I don't think it's going to tell us right now. Um, but basically, you would implement it like this. On collision enter, and then you would um, do something on that collision. So typically what I've done in the past is on collision enter, just um, don't do any extra checking, just perform an action. Well, in this case, we're doing some extra checking. And that extra checking... I'm going to play again, is basically, are you touching the thing near the right hand or the left hand or neither? So I might be colliding with this thing, so I'm going to collide with it backward and nothing should show up. But if I collide with it with my right hand, then it should do something special. So I'll show you what's happening here. The first thing, well, let me say that the the thing we're actually interested in right here is this collision dot get contacts so get contacts retrieves all contact points for this collision so when you call on collision stay it gives you a collision information this is different from a collider a collider is that component that lives on the object a collision is extra information about a particular collision that just happened so in order to get those contact points from the collision, we have to feed in an existing array that it will fill in. So basically what we're doing here is we're creating an array of contact points. We're giving it 10 slots, basically. And then we're saying get contacts and put them into this array. So that will uh, basically fill up this array with any number of contacts. We might not have 10. In fact, in this scene, there's no way we're going to have 10. We're going to have max like two. Um, but the, uh, it, it'll just leave those empty. So what we'll do then is it's going to return a, a number of contacts that it found. We're going to loop through those contacts and then we will check each one. So what we're going to check is the distance between that contact point and the right hand position. So if that distance is less than uh, 20 centimeters, so that's 0.2 meters, then we're going to leave a trail. Same thing with the left hand. We're going to check if the distance between that contact point and the left hand is less than 0.2 meters, and then we're going to leave a trail. So the reason we're doing a distance instead of exactly equal to is it's possible because the hand of this ghost is you know, bigger than just a single point, it's possible that maybe the side of the hand was hit but that's not exactly on the right hand position on this ghost. So like um, the right hand position is right here, but if it were to hit like right here, then it wouldn't be exactly equal. So we can't just do a test for whether the distance is zero. We have to do some sort of radius. So that's what's happening. And we're calling it in on collision stay. So it'll be called every time, as long as this collision is continuing to stick to the other object, then we're going to call this, we're going to check all of these contacts, and if, if it's close to the right hand, we're going to leave a trail um, at that contact point of the right hand material, and uh, if we find one connected to the left hand, we'll leave the left hand material. And I'll just show you that one more time. So... The right hand material is set to be blue and the left hand material is set to be this green color. Whoops. Okay, now I want to show you the other part. So this right here, this box here is a trigger. And the triggers are designed so that you, something with a rigid body can go inside of it and then you do something interesting. So um, I recently had a scenario where I wanted to know if a specific point 
on the collider was inside of a trigger. And so what I've demonstrated here is that you can test for that point inside of the trigger, and then I'm leaving a trail inside the trigger. So as soon as I leave it, I'm no longer leaving any trail, but then anytime I'm inside of it, I get that trail. So what's happening here, and I will point out that the, let's see, I have two solid cubes in this scene, and then I've got this one right here, this trigger cube. And the only thing that's different about this one is the is trigger box is checked. So there's no rigid body on this. Um, the only rigid body in the scene is on the ghost. Okay, and that's at the top level. So I'm going to uh, hop into the code here and show you how this on trigger stay method works. So there's just like with the on collision enter stay and exit, there's an on trigger stay um, enter and exit. And so what we do in here is we're going to use this closest point uh, function. So unlike the uh, collision, uh, on collision stay, where we get a collision object and we can go through all the contacts, for triggers, we do, we get a collider. So all it does is it returns to us the collider that we've triggered. And what we'll do is we'll call this other. So this is the, the other collider. So meaning the ghost has its own collider and the trigger that it's colliding with is called other. We're going to call other.closest point and then we're going to give it the left hand position. So what this does is it returns a point on the collider that is closest to the given location. So we have a given location, so the left hand. So we're asking, is the left, or what's the closest point to the left hand in this trigger? And if it's inside of the trigger, which it is in this case, then we will get um, a small distance. It should be like almost zero, but again, I'm suspicious that maybe sometimes it might be a little bit off. It might not be exactly the same. So what we're doing here is we're getting a distance between the closest point to the left hand and the actual left hand position, and we're testing if it's less than three centimeters. So depending on your needs, you may be able to make this larger or smaller. It really isn't that crucial as long as it works for you. So um, we're going to leave a trail if the left hand is inside of the trigger. And the same thing with the right hand. If the distance between the closest point to the right hand and the right hand position is less than three centimeters, then we're gonna leave a trail. And I'll just show you again what that ends up looking like. So you see that because this right hand is inside and the left hand is inside, we're seeing both. Now, if I'm, I'm gonna exit this and you can see that I'm still colliding with the trigger. So what's happening is this trigger on trigger stay is being called, but the only the right hand is is a distance of less than 0 .3, 0 0.03. The left hand is currently being ignored. But as soon as I hop inside, then it works. So that's kind of all I wanted to show you with this video. Um, I had no idea, and I've been using Unity for probably five years now, I had no idea that you could do this level of fine-grained uh, collision. I'm sure this is something that very seasoned Unity developers are well aware of, but um, if you're a beginner or even a five-year you know, veteran of Unity and you're literally getting a salary for working on Unity like me, then you might not know about this. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you'd like to see more like it or if you have any other feedback, I always appreciate feedback in the comments. Thanks so much.